In this video, I am going to take a set of straight stairs and then remove the bottom three steps and then install some winders at the bottom. However, first let's go ahead and take a look at the straight stairs and how it connects to the upper wall with a ledger. Take a look at the bottom here, how it connects to the bottom. And even though this is not on a wood framed floor, I think you can get the gist of the video and figure out what we're doing. So the first thing I want to do is remove the first three risers and treads. And then I will provide you with two ways to support the stairway because we are going to be removing part of the stair stringers. And in reality, you might not need to do anything to this stair stringer here or even this stair stringer here but you're going to have to cut a section of the stair stringer here in most cases and when I say that it's going to depend upon the length of the tread on the inside of this winder here and sometimes it's going to be easier to lay out the floor plan without these stringers in the way so let's go ahead and install a temporary wall and these can be built in a variety of different ways. This is just one of the ways that I'm doing it here so that we can provide some type of support for the stair stringers. Or you can use this method here. And all we're going to do here is notch the stringers and then install our support wall. And this can be done before you build the wall. And this video is not meant to provide you with step-by-step -step instructions. It's meant to provide you with an idea on how you can do something like this. If you need more information about building winder stairs, then I would suggest checking out one of the books I have at our website on how to build and frame winder stairs. For those of you who are not familiar with my videos, I try not to load up all my videos with unnecessary information or information that I have already put in quite a few different videos. So if you're not interested in purchasing the book, then I would suggest going to our website, clicking on the stair building link, and then checking out some of our other videos on how to build, repair, or even remodel winder type stairs. So with that said, let's go ahead and cut our stringers. And we're doing this again to make it a little easier to lay out the steps for the winder stairs. And another thing I wanna point out, and that's the headroom, make sure that the upper floor isn't going to be in in the way of the stairway that you're modifying. And I have other videos that will provide you with building code information also. However, I would definitely recommend checking with your local building department or building authorities to verify all of the information in this video as far as your local building codes are concerned. And the width of this particular stairway, even though it does not meet most building codes of 36 inches, is two foot 10 and a quarter inches measuring from the inside of the wall to the outside of this wall. And I'm simply going to add 15 inches to that measurement to create a box that we're going to use for our winder steps. And again, if I lose anybody here, then make sure that you check out some of our other videos or our book that will provide you with step-by-step -step instructions on how to lay all of this out. And even though I'm adding 15 inches to this measurement, you might be able to make it a little bit smaller. And that might require you to do a little more math calculations. And another thing I wanna point out is that we're going to be starting with the face of the riser here and not the front of the tread, which means you might need to make this box a little bit larger if your layout lines are going to represent represent the front of the tread instead of the front of the riser. And to figure out the lines, you're simply going to find a 30 degree angle. And to figure out these lines here, you're simply going to pull off of this side or this side here with a 30 degree angle. So if I have a 90 degree angle, a right angle, a square corner is 90 degrees. And I divide that by three, that's gonna provide me with three 30 angle steps or lines that will represent the front of my riser. And of course, this is really where I lose most people. However, don't worry because if your measurements are off just a little bit and you're still within the six inch minimum inside measurement and the 12 inch walk line minimum measurement, then you're gonna be okay if these lines aren't perfectly 30 degrees. 
And if you remember, our measurement here was two foot ten and a quarter from the front of the wall to the outside. And I'm simply going to measure from this line here and come over the same distance to create the inside of the winder stairway. And then after I've removed these measurements, you can start to see the winder stairway starting to take shape. And these are the minimum measurements that are going to be required most of the time, not in all states or in all countries. And that's the reason why I went out a little further than I normally do was just to play it safe. However, the minimum measurement here might be in your area six inches. And if that's the case, then you might be able to make this line 10 inches or even nine inches instead of going the full 15 inches to create the center point that we needed here. And with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and install our base framing plates. And they will simply go around the perimeter of our winder stairway. So this will be the inside corner. Here's our first step, the front riser. And then the outside of the winder here, outside of the winder here. And let's just go ahead and take a quick tour of this to show you that the pins that we're going to be using might need to be located to where they won't be in the way of the framing. And if you don't know where the framing is going to be, then you might think about only putting a few pins in here, the minimum that you need, or spend a little more time studying your design and trying to figure out where the pins will be located to where they won't be in the way of the framing. Otherwise, you could end up notching over the framing. And you can do this two ways. You can either start from the top and work your way down to the bottom, or you can start from the bottom and work your way up to the top. Now let's just go ahead and take a tour here of the three different sections here. And you can see here where we are ripping the lumber down, we're making it a little smaller to create the riser height we need for our first winder step. And then I would suggest making some marks here that line up with the lines we're going to be using. Now this is going to represent the front of our second step. So if I put this board here on this side of the line, then it should provide me with a way to line up the front of our next step. And for those of you wondering what I was talking about when I said that the pins might be in the way, then that would be a situation like this instead of a situation like this. Next up, let's take a look at the center board that we put in here and how we are attaching it to the concrete and of course keeping our pins out of the way. Next up, let's go ahead and add our next riser and platform. And you can see here where we have a joist coming down. This joist here is positioned in this spot here so that it can be supported by this framing stud. And then, of course, you can nail this section into this part here. And those nails can come from this direction this way, or they can be toenailed into this direction here. And you might even be able to get a hanger if that's what you want. Or grab another framing plate, put it underneath it, and then run a little support stud under it. However, with the price of lumber like it is today, it might be cheaper to get a hanger or use some other type of building hardware. Next up, you can put the drywall backing in for this corner or backing for the corner if you are going to use something other than drywall. And again, you can see where the pins are positioned to where they are not going to be in the way of the framing. And I went ahead and used some 4x4s here to provide me with a little more support. However, you could always nail two 2x4s together if that's going to work better for you. A view of the corner here. And another thing you might want to do is use wider lumber. For example, if this is nine inches, you might want to use a two by 10 here and then have all of the support joists sitting on top of the plates. So another thing you can consider doing view from above. And then let's go ahead and build our third step. And on the inside corner here, I wanted to provide you with a different way of doing something like this. I cut an angle on the two by four to create a flat surface here. And you can do that on all of the support boards if you want to, instead of doing something like this. And next up, let's go ahead and take a look at how the edge board here, or rim joist, is supported by the two by four. And then of course you can nail this board into the wall framing studs. Let's go ahead and pan out here, give you a view of the front of 
each step. And then within a second, we finish the stairway. We've cut all of our plywood or sheathing for our steps, along with our one inch overhang on the front of each one of the steps to match the one inch overhang on our existing stairway. And if you do not have a nosing or if you have an undercut, then you might need to do some modifications here. And of course, the easiest one would be to simply cut the front of the nosing even with the front edge of the riser if you didn't have a nosing. View of the corner there and then let's not forget we need to keep all of these framing components inside of the flat plane that would represent the inside of our walls that might be covered with drywall. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because it's not uncommon to have one of these framing studs or even the end of our support boards sticking out. And then of course that's going to create a problem for the wall finish. Nice and flat there nice and flat on the other side. And we are done with this project. And for those of you looking for more information about the treads, I do think I have two or three videos on that already. However, that's probably not going to be necessary. You can usually trace this stuff out or simply grab a framing square and a measuring tape and find the dimensions you need to cut each one of these steps.